Good morning, and welcome to another episode of BMS, Bible Made Simple. I am your host, Pastor Dr. Yvonne Scott Miller. It's Saturday morning, the Sabbath. About 5.30 this morning, I was pushed out of bed. I thought it was just me in my usual routine, thinking it's time to get up and go to work. But then the words pushed came to mind. And a scripture followed. And I said, surely God, you don't want me to do that as a podcast this morning. So I, I got up and put a load of laundry in the machine and got back in the bed with the intent of pushing it out of my mind. But boom, I'm up again with the words pushed in my mind and a scripture that follows. I said, God, if this is really you, then I will speak it. And if it's not you, tie my tongue. So here goes. It was about 2016, 2017. I was standing in one of the hallways in my gynecology office. For those of you who are listening to this podcast for the first time, I am not only a speaking voice for God, a minister of the gospel, but I'm also a gynecologist by profession, by trade. Uh, I've been in private practice since 1993 in Gwinnett County, Georgia. On that particular afternoon, we were just chit-chatting in the hallway with my staff. I've been blessed to have a wonderful staff of women. Throughout the years, he has sent me women who know God. And I don't mean know his name. I don't mean know uh, a little bit about the word. I mean know as in intimate, as in know God and know his ways. On this particular day, one of my staff members just yelled out and said, he pushed me, he pushed me. Did you see that, Dr. Scott? He pushed me, he pushed me. There was no one around. And what she began to explain is that she had been in spiritual warfare for for weeks and a spirit pushed her. And this healthy woman hit the floor because he pushed her. A spiritual push that landed her in a physical place on the floor. And she began to get up and rebuke the enemy in all, with all her power, with all her might, and with all her vigor. This story comes to my thought infrequently because I don't think of that often. But about two weeks ago, I was doing a morning walk. Sometimes I walk at 5 in the morning. Sometimes I would walk at 5.30. Sometimes I'd walk at 6. On this particular day, it was a Friday. And on this particular Friday, I, my office was closed because of COVID-19. So at this particular day, I was walking probably around 7. Sun was fully out. I could see everything. And, and I was probably not 100 feet away from my house. Uh, and I, I got the unction to do a text to the executive producer of the album that will be coming out later. And I had not even pressed a, a letter. And pow! I found myself in the middle of my neighbor's driveway. I had fallen and fallen hard. I had fallen hard and cracked my brand new iPhone. But more importantly, I had landed on my right arm. All my weight hit my right arm and I was in pain. I sat there for minutes and gathered myself. I even did a video of it. I'm like, this is what happens when you text and walk. I, I made light of it. I looked around and I figured, I, I contemplated, okay, Lord, how are we going to get up out this driveway? I looked around to see if there's anyone to help me, and there was not. 
I located my phone, which was about two feet away, and, and rolled and picked it up and saw what kind of condition it was in. Somehow or another, I mustered up the strength to pull my aching body about that driveway off that hard concrete that I'd landed on in less than a second, in a split second, pow, I hit that driveway. And I refused to be beat. I continued with my 17-minute walk until I got home. And then the pain hit, and boy, did it hit. And that was Friday. I medicated myself with pain patches and Motrin and Advil all Friday and Saturday. And then on Sunday, I still refused to be beat. I cooked the family dinner. I even cooked two sweet potato pies because I refused to let that arm beat me. I just felt like it was, it was my physical therapy to continue to love on my family. But as I was standing in my kitchen, the thoughts of what had happened in 2016 and 2017 came to my mind. My, the words of my staff member that said, he pushed me, he pushed me, radiated into my head. And I stopped what I was doing and said, Lord, was I pushed? Lord, was I pushed? And I began to think on on that thing, and, and one of my, my knees came down. I said, was I pushed? She said, Auntie Vaughn, you've walked that trail many days. You know that in the daytime and you know the nighttime, and you have never fallen before. And she just looked at me when I said, was I pushed? My son came home for dinner that afternoon and, and that thought, that concern was still in my mind. And he said, Mama, you maybe you were pushed. I thought about what was going to be happening with my right hand in about 48 hours. In about 48 hours, I was going to be sitting at my computer completing a grant application for one of the visions that God has given me. It would be one of the most important online grant applications that I would ever complete. A grant application for our autism school, for our autism and ADHD academy, for our Stars Born Pre-K Academy, for our Anointed Ones ADHD and Autism Academy. I, I needed that right hand because that right hand would be using the words that God would download into my brain to type it into that application to hit send in 48 hours. And now that right hand was feeling like a Mack truck was stuck on it and would not move. Somebody out there listening to my voice right now is wondering, have I been pushed? There's something going on in your life that's got you holding you back from what God has called you to do, has, is holding you back from your assignment, who's, who's got you crippled. He's got you crippled because he's looked into your future. And he knows that there is something great in your future. He, he's got your mind crippled with negative thoughts. You're being pushed. He, he's got your body aching in the right and you aching in the left. And you don't understand it and the doctors don't understand it. You're being pushed. Your money is funny when it never was funny before. And, and you were a tither. You were a giver. You were a seeder to other ministries. You you believed in that theory of, of twice sown seed. And, and now your money is dried up. You're being pushed. You're being distracted with the cares of the world. You're worried about family. You're worried about children. You're worried about job stability. You're being 
being pushed means you are having distractions thrown at you. That's keeping your eyes off of God and keeping your eyes off of where God has you going. It's a tactic of the enemy. You're being pushed. Now, someone listening to this podcast is saying, that's not real. And they're saying that spiritual warfare is not real. And I bring your attention to the words of the Apostle Paul in the book of Ephesians 6. And for eight verses, he lets us know that spiritual warfare is truly real. It's truly real. He says in Ephesians 10, and I won't read the entire eight verses, but just let me utter Ephesians 6, 10 to 12. This is the words of the Apostle Paul. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. When you get pushed, this is how you stand. The 12th verse says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, and against spiritual wickedness, in high places. Indulge me one more verse, the 13th. Wherefore, take up on you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil days and having done all to stand. I know each of us has been to a basketball game or seen a basketball game at some point in time in our life. And there's a thing called taking the charge where 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 a a defensive player will stand at the top of the key, plant his feet firmly, cross his hands in front of him, and prepare to be pushed by the offensive opponent. You stand there knowing you're gonna fall, but you stand there firmly with your feet on the ground at the top of the key, your hands strapped in front of you, and you take the charge. That's what you do when you're pushed. That's what the Apostle Paul tells us to do in Ephesians 6. He says, stand there and take the charge. He says, but while you're standing there, I'm going to give you the defensive strategy The defensive strategy when you stand is you got to put on your armor while you stand. I'm I'm not going to preach the entire armor, but I just want to speak it really quickly. He says, when you're standing at the top of the key and you feel like you're getting pushed, when you feel like your mind is getting pushed, when your body is aching with pains and you don't know what's going on and why, and you feel like you're getting pushed, when, when, you, when, when your money is funny, when your children are out of whack, when your business is unstable, when your ministry is up in the air, when you know you're being pushed, he says, put on your defensive posture, stand at the top of the key, and prepare to take the charge. But just stand with your feet in a place of peace. Don't get angry. Don't get weary. Get rid of the unforgiveness and get rid of the frustrations of life. Get rid of the things that have your soul bound in iniquity, unforgiveness, hatred. Get rid of those things. Cover your loins, your your lower torso with truth. Walk in the truth of God's word. Subdue your flesh. Put your breastplate of righteousness on and and, 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 and and when you put your breastplate of righteousness on you know that your helmet of salvation is on because your breastplate of righteousness is Jesus because Jesus when he is in your heart when you are saved then you know that you can take the charge because God sees Jesus and, and the Jesus in you and he's going to protect you 
at all cost. Put up your shield of faith. So when that charge comes and tells you you ain't going to be nobody, you can say that I am the head and not the tail. When that charge comes and says you're not going to get that house, you're not going to get that building, then you can put up your your shield of faith that reminds you of that sword of that word that says that he will give me houses that I did not build. He'll give me wells that I did not dig. He'll give me houses full of all good things. I've got my shield in one hand that's blocking the darts of the enemy and I'm blocking it with the sword and with the shield, with the word and with my faith. I put my feet I've covered my loins. I covered my breastplate. I covered my right. I've covered my left. And God said that he will be my rear guard. He'll cover my back. The book of Isaiah. That's my 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 defensive posture. I'm going to take the charge. But when I feel like I'm being pushed, Paul in that Ephesians 6 chapter tells me I've got just simply one, one offensive posture. While I'm standing at the top of the key, while I'm standing there ready to to take the blows that are coming at me, I don't see who's going to hit me from the right or left. I'm taking the blow. He says in Ephesians 6 and 18, pray. (laughs) But not just pray in your flesh. Because because remember, you're going to have to subdue your flesh by, by covering your loins with truth. <laughs> you're going to pray in a special way. He says, pray always. Specific prayers. He say, pray and prayer and supplication. Meaning, be specific with your prayers. But it is in the capital S-P-I-R-T. Pray in your heavenly language. Pray in your Morris code of the spirit world. Pray in, pray in a language that the enemy cannot understand. Pray in a language that connects your heart with heaven's heart. Pray in a language that connects your spirit with his spirit. And, and if you don't have your prayer language, just ask. <laughs> if you don't have, say, ask, ask earnestly. That might be today the offensive posture that you have to take to get out of this spiritual warfare. You've done all that you can do and you're standing at the key with your whole armor on. But you don't have your offensive weapon. You don't have your spiritual language. And today he's saying if you will just ask. Just ask. In 1 Corinthians 12 chapter, the Apostle Paul is talking again. He says, the Holy Spirit will give liberally, freely. You don't have to fast and plead and supplicate for a hundred days and give, you know, go into the morning corner. Just ask. And the Holy Spirit will hear your supplication and your earnest heart. Ask for your spiritual language. But until then, just pray. He said, pray in the Spirit. But he also says, don't just be selfish. He says, intercede for your other saints. He says, I-, I need you to know that you're, if you're being pushed, then somebody else is being pushed. And I need you to open your eyes. He, it's right there in Ephesians 6, chapter 18, the verse praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, capital S, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Don't just pray for yourself, but intercede for that saint who you know through your spiritual eyes is also being pushed like I didn't understand that I may have been pushed until three days later. There's a saint out there. There's a saved sister and brother out there. There's a newbie in Christ out there. There's a, a girl or boy who, who is contemplating t- 
taking Jesus as their savior who is being pushed because the enemy knows if they can push him now that might they might stifle their yes lord yes so watch with all diligence perseverance for not just yourself but for all of God's creation pray pray in the spirit pray in the natural Spiritual warfare is real, my brothers and sisters. Well, Pastor Yvonne, what's the good news? The good news of the gospel is we win. (laughs) The good news of the gospel is we win. The good news of the word of God, the sword of the spirit that I leave with you today comes out of Isaiah 54th chapter and the 16th verse. Let me go to it. Isaiah 54th chapter and the 16th and 17th verse. Let me read this good news to you. Let me read this good news to all those who are being pushed. It reads thus, Isaiah 54, 16 and 7. This is God speaking. This is capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D speaking. He's speaking out of the mouth of his prophet Isaiah. And he leaves these words with you. Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. And I have created the waster to destroy. I've created that enemy who's going to try to push you. But here's the good news. No weapon, 17th verse. No weapon, 17th verse. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. The good news of the gospel is that when you're getting pushed, take the charge. But there's no charge that he can bring against you. No push that he can put on your mind, your body, your money, your ministry, your business, your children. There's no push that he can bring against you that I have not given you a way of escape. The good news of the gospel is we win. The good news of the gospel is that no weapon formed against us will prosper. So be encouraged, my friends. Be encouraged, my saints. Bring, be encouraged, my newbies in Christ. So how is my arm doing? Well, when I got up at 5.30 this morning, the first thing I did was go to my Advil bottle and try to dismiss this lesson. But what happened in 48 hours? That Monday, I came home after a long day's work. I was tired. I was frustrated because pain makes you frustrated. It makes you agitated and irritated. And the only thing I was good for was going into bed. And so I was in bed probably about 7.30 that night. But at about 9.30 that night, the Holy Spirit pulled me out of bed. And I stood straight up and said, The devil is a lie. I got up out of that bed. And from about 9.30 that night till about 3.30 the next morning, I sat at my computer completing what needed to be done to get that grant application in process. And so I'm believing God for one more piece of the puzzle to complete that process in five days. And then I'll be able to hit send 
and then it'll be on God. So no weapon formed against me prospered in this case either and never will because God is my father. He's got my back and he's given me the armor to cover my front in his word. So pray, my brothers and sisters. Pray. I pray for you this day. Ah, and he said, don't just say it to it. Dear Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, I stand this morning praying for all saints in this pandemic who feel they're being pushed. There are some out there who don't even know they're being pushed. But there is greater on the other end of the push. The enemy has peeped into your future and he knows what is in your in your future. And he's trying to derail you. He's trying to discourage you. He's trying to, dis, to, 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 to discourage you. So right now I declare in the mighty name of Jesus that you've got to get your hands off of God's children. You have no power. What rests inside of them is Jesus. And greater is he that is in them and in us than he that is in the world. So leave them alone. Because God is our Father. And if he said it, it's going to come to pass. He created you, my enemy. And no weapon formed against us will prosper. So dear Father God, we give you glory. We give you honor, we give you praise, and we say thank you for allowing us to win in the end. Thank you for sending your son Jesus so that every lash that was placed on his back is a a lash for me, is a push mark for me. And when he said it was finished, then I know that there is no weapon formed against me today tomorrow or in the future that will keep me bound and keep me down because you are my Lord. Jesus, you are my Savior. You are my God. And I know that the word is true that if you have set a path for me, I will accomplish all those things that you have set out for me to do. To God be the glory. In Jesus' name, I'll give you glory. Amen. Amen. And amen. Till we meet again, pray for the saints with all prayer and supplication during this COVID season. Pray for those who you see are being pushed. And pray for yourself so that you faint not and grow weary not because the word says in due season if you don't faint you will see what God said that's my paraphrase version in Jesus name amen amen and amen